I'm very excited to be giving a talk here. Um, I'll be talking about our work with Sabera Sadi on random order streaming matching problem. So a quick reminder, um, a matching of a graph is a collection of edges in the graph, uh, no two of which share an endpoint. And a maximum matching is a ma matching of uh, maximum possible size. And we particularly consider this problem in the streaming setting. Here, the edges of the graph arrive one by one. And the goal is to have just one single pass over the stream and output a large matching of the graph using a small space. And how much space do we allow? We will particularly consider the regime of a space with n uh, polylog space um, and where n is the number of vertices in the graph. And note that uh, the solution can be as large as omega n. So this is uh, very close to optimal. And uh, this regime of a space has actually been studied quite a lot for various graph problems and has its own name. It's called the semi-streaming uh, regime of a space. Good. So let's see what is known for this uh, model. So a simple greedy maximal matching algorithm obtains a half approximation using only O of n space. What is this algorithm? As the edges arrive, if we are able to, we put the edge inside our matching, right? So the first edge arrives, we put it in the matching. The next edge arrives, we cannot put it in the matching because it touches one matching edge and we continue to do so, right? So we continue until we see all the edges of the graph. And when all the edges arrive, we have what is called a maximal matching, a matching to which we cannot add directly any other edge. And a maximal matching is known to be at least half the size of a maximum matching, but it's not any more than that because uh, if, for example, the graph is a path of length three and the middle edge is added first, you put it in your matching where the max, whereas the maximum matching has size two. So you only get a half approximation. And in fact, it's a, a big open problem of the area to see whether we can go beyond this half approximate algorithm. Right? So this uh, trivial, simple, greedy algorithm is uh, currently the best known algorithm in the streaming setting for the uh, maximum matching problem uh, in the semi-streaming model. Good. And on the lower bound side, uh, there have been some works and the best known lower bound is a very recent work of Capralo from SOTA21, uh, which showed that to go beyond 0.59 approximation, one needs much more than a polylog space. But note that there's still a big gap from half to 0.59 approximation. Good. Okay. Note that in this, this streaming model is, is, is in some sense doubly worst case, because not only just not only the graph itself is picked by an adversary, but the arrival order of the edges is also adversarial. There's another natural model called the random order streaming model, where the graph is still adversarial, but the edges arrive in a random the edges arrive in a random order. Or in other words, the arrival order is a random permutation of the edge set of the graph. And this is what we will focus on today. Okay, so, so the rest of the talk, we will only talk about the random order streaming model for the matching problem. Okay, so the first natural question is, can we beat this greedy half approximation given that the edges arrive in a random order? And the first barrier uh, is that the greedy algorithm is still only half approximate. And this was observed first by Dyer and Fries in 91. And this is a graph, right? So this is the, the graph on the left shows the maximum matching of this graph, which is a perfect matching covering every vertex. But if you run the greedy maximal matching algorithm in a random order, you're more likely to put the edges of the click into your matching. And this prevents you from matching the vertices outside. So you'll only get a half approximation if you get, if you run the greedy maximal matching algorithm. Good. But the good news is that due to a breakthrough of Conrad, Magnias and Matthew from 2012, we have better algorithms. So here is, a, table of the known works, uh, known results prior to our work. So there are two lines of uh, works. Uh, the first uh, pioneer in the work of Conrad et al. is based on uh, discovering a number of small length three augmented paths. Um, and here the game is to discover more and more of these length three augmenting paths. Uh, so the original work of Conrad et al. obtained half plus uh, some small constant approximation using O of N space. And the approximation ratio within this framework improved over time. The best known currently is within this uh, framework is 0.64 by product graphs by Farhadi et al. and 0.54 for general graphs. So hey, Good. I have a yes. question. Do these algorithms know in beforehand how many edges there will be? Or uh, that's actually, 
Yeah, that's a very good question. So uh, you can always uh, guess you have at the expense of in increasing the uh, space by some log n factor, you can have multiple uh, geometrically increasing uh, guesses. And uh, so long as just one of them is correct, you're done, right? So yeah, so, so some of them assume that you're given a priori the value of m, the number of edges, some of them don't assume this. Um, but the difference is only a log n factor uh, that uh, is multiplied by the space. Yeah, that was a good question. Uh, good, so, so yeah, so, so within the first line of work, the best known is, is close to 0.6 for our pirate graphs, but there's an alternative line of work based on a notion of EDCS, which I'll talk about extensively uh, as we go forward throughout the talk. And, and then the EDCS uh, obtains a two thirds approximation. So the first work of SID et al from 2019 required n root n space. So it, it was not quite in the semi streaming regime of a space, uh, but still it was uh, not trivial to see we can actually obtain two thirds approximation. And later uh, Bernstein improved the space down to n log n. So the state of the art prior to our work was a two thirds approximation for this problem using n log n space, the semi streaming model on the random arrival, I think. Good. Okay, so I'd like to point out that this two thirds approximation of Bernstein actually matches a natural barrier for the problem. But first, the first line of work, as I said, is based on discovering a number of length three augmenting paths. And it turns out that even if you discover all of your length three augmenting paths that exist in your graph, you might still be at most a two, appro two thirds approximate. So, what I mean by that is so all of these works try to find length three augmenting paths. And then the two thirds is a natural barrier for this uh, line of work, because even if you discover all length three augmenting paths, you are not necessarily gonna be uh, above two thirds approximation. Good. And the second line of work is uh, based on EDCS. And there are also examples showing that an EDCS does not include a better than two thirds approximation. And I will show you some of these examples as we go forward. Uh, so this is also a barrier for, this, for the EDCS approach. But more interestingly, uh, and more importantly, for several related models, two thirds approximation is actually the right answer. So I'd like to highlight two. The first one is the one way communication complexity of matching. I won't go through the details of the model because it's, it's not needed for our talk, but a beautiful paper of Goel, Kaprolov and Kana from 2012 shows that uh, in this one-way communication complexity model for, for matching, there is an algorithm that obtains a two-thirds approximation, and it is probably impossible to go beyond two-thirds approximation. Another related model is the fault-tolerant matching model. Again, I won't go through the details of the model, but here too, two-thirds approximation each is achievable, and better than that is probably impossible. And somewhat interestingly, for both of these models, actually, an EDCS, can be employed to obtain this tight two-thirds approximation. So these models are very related to the streaming model, um, but it turns out that two-thirds is not uh, breakable in those models. So a natural open problem therefore is, is, is this two-thirds approximation also the right answer for, for this random order streaming model or not? Uh, and this was uh, explicitly asked by Bernstein in his paper whether or not a strictly better than two thirds approximation can be achieved uh, in the random order streaming model. And this is the problem that the answer in this work, we show that indeed it is possible to go beyond two thirds approximation, or in other words, two thirds is not the right answer for, for random order streams. So slightly more precisely, we show that for some small uh, positive constant epsilon, it is possible to obtain a two thirds plus epsilon approximation using n log n space. And here we assume that uh, the number of edges M is given. If uh, you're not given the number of edges, you, you, you're, you'd use uh, N log N uh, squared space. All right. And our work in some sense unifies this uh, mostly disjoint lines of work. Uh, our algorithm is both, both based on uh, the notion of EDCS and also is based on uh, discovering a number of uh, short augmenting paths, but we go beyond length three augmenting paths. Okay, so I'll uh, have to tell you a little bit about both lines of work before I get to talk about our result. Okay, maybe this is yeah, the right so I'll time. Start. Uh, maybe this is the yeah. right time to ask the questions. 
the question uh, yeah. is there some kind of a, a lower bound like you had uh, like you had in the previous case in the non random order uh, well yeah yeah that's a very good question so uh, currently there is no lower bound known ruling out even a 1 minus epsilon approximation so we have a lower bound i will mention it at the end of the talk we show that if you want to obtain a 1 minus epsilon approximation you would have to spend uh, the, the space needs to depend exponentially in epsilon in one over epsilon but that is, again for, for constant epsilon that doesn't rule out a one say a 0.99 approximation with uh, near linear in n space mm -hmm. so no there there is no lower bound oh, yeah. any other questions all right so now let me give you a high level overview of the fireworks and then I tell you about uh, an outline of our algorithm and the details of the steps of our algorithm. Good. So the first line of work was based on uh, augmenting paths. So in particular, uh, Conrad, Magnias, and Matthew showed, gave a better understanding of this greedy maximal matching algorithm on the random arrivals. And recall our bad example for this uh, algorithm uh, for which it is not better than half approximate. Right? We call it there was this, this clique and your greedy algorithm will pick most of the edges of the matching from the clique. And so its size is only going to be half the size of the maximum matching. But uh, this example already shows you that because this middle part is very dense, only if you see a small fraction of the edges, Right in the stream, you have obtained your near half approximation. In particular, Conrad et al. Et al formalized this and showed that either the greedy maximal matching algorithm on the random arrivals is a strictly better than half approximate, or it forms a close to half approximation very early on in the stream. And having this very close to half approximation and early on in the stream, they showed that one can spend the rest of the edges of the stream finding short length three augmenting paths and applying which gives you a strictly better than half approximation for all graphs. And the rest of the works within the same framework was based on the, the same intuition. Uh, mostly they uh, improved over the augmentation phase and discovered more and more of these length three augmenting paths and as such they improved the approximation ratio. So the second line of work is based on notion of edge degree constraint subgraphs or EDCS. And the EDCS was introduced first in the context, in the context of dynamic algorithms by Bernstein and Stein in 2015. So what EDCS is, it's, it's a sparse subgraph of G. It's, a, it's an edge subgraph with satisfying certain edge degree constraints. And if you satisfy these edge degree constraints, it's guaranteed that your EDCS is going to include a two thirds approximate matching of G, okay? So the game is to construct this EDCS and the first construction of EDCS in the random order streaming model was given by Asad et al, which as I mentioned, required uh, n root n space. And in an elegant proof, Bernstein actually showed that the space can be reduced into n log n and uh, obtain, uh, construct an EDCS uh, using this much, this much space and also get uh, a two thirds approximation. And I'd like to point out that both of these works actually require the random arrival of the edges in a crucial way. And that is why we cannot even go beyond half approximation uh, in under adversarial arrivals. Good. So now let me give you an outline of our algorithm. So our algorithm has two steps. In the first step, we present a better understanding of tight instances for EDCS and prove the following. We show that for any input graph G, either the algorithm of Bernstein obtains a strictly better than two thirds approximation, or it obtains a close to two thirds approximation very early on after merely observing little over one fraction of the edges, okay? And I'd like to point out that there are instances where the algorithm of Bernstein does not include, uh, does not obtain a better than two thirds approximation. What this lemma says is that in those instances, we have to find a two thirds approximation very early on. And the second uh, step of our algorithm is augmentation. So having a two thirds approximation early on, we show that we can find uh, a number of, we can find many augmenting paths of now length up to five 
in the remainder of the stream, applying which gives us a strictly better than two thirds approximation. And it's crucial to go up to length five augmenting paths, uh, because as I said, uh, you could have a two thirds approximation leaving no length, uh, no augmenting paths of length smaller than five, length three or one. All right. So to compare it with the framework of uh, Conrad et al. So recall that they show that you can find a half approximation very early on using randomized greedy maximal matching, and then spend the rest of the stream finding length three augmenting paths. And note that our framework is actually very similar. We find a large matching early on and try to augment it for the rest of the stream, but there are two main differences. The first one is that we find a two thirds approximation early on instead of a half approximation by analyzing an EDCS, which is, which is a completely different object. So, so the proof techniques are very different. And in fact, we give a deterministic characterization of tight instances of EDCS, whereas the proof of Conrad et al was for a random ordering, uh, for a random ordering of the edges for maximum matching. And the second main difference is that we find augmenting paths of length up to five and there are challenges with that compared to length three augmenting paths that I mentioned as we go forward through the talk. Okay, if there's any question, uh, please ask. Otherwise I'll tell you more about the details of uh, these steps. So, so maybe could you, could you clarify what the edge degree constraints are? Yes. That's actually the next uh, uh, the next step of the talk. Mm -hmm. I'll give you uh, the needed background on EDCS and tell us uh, tell you about uh, our um, our new properties of EDCS. Good. So this EDCS uh, definition is as follows. So you're given a graph G, and we want to sparsify it by picking an edge subgraph. So right? so H is an EDCS of G. Uh, if it is an edge subgraph, so it's the vertex set is the same, you only pick some of the edges of G. And, and this is the definition for some parameter beta. Think of beta as some large constant for this talk, right? Okay, so for some parameter beta, a subgraph H of G is a beta EDCS if it satisfies the following two uh, conditions. The first condition is that for, for every edge that we take inside H, some of the degrees of the endpoints of that edge uh, inside H should be at most beta. Note that here and throughout the talk, I will always talk about uh, degree, degrees of the versus, versus inside H, and I never never talk about the degrees inside the original graph. Right? So every every time I say degrees, it is about the degrees of the EDCS. Right? So the first property basically says if if, any, if you have any edge in for for any edge that's inside your EDCS H, its edge degree must be at most beta. And the second constraint says that if you are missing an edge in your EDCS, if there is an edge that is inside G, but is not in, inside H, its edge degree must be at least beta minus one. And to give you a little intuition about these two uh, properties, think of it as follows. We want to find a sparse subgraph whose edge degrees are all small, and we want this subgraph to be maximal, right? The second condition says, the second condition is precisely the maximality. If, if you're missing an edge, it is because its edge degree is already large enough that you cannot add it to your EDCS. If you add it, it will violate something. Good. So this is the definition of EDCS. And now let me tell you a little bit about some of the basic properties of EDCS. Well, because every edge has uh, edge degree at most beta, every vertex also has uh, degree at most beta. And so and in the DCS has at most n beta edges. And again, thinking of beta as some large constant, and it says it is only going to have O of n edges. And the second uh, property is that for every beta larger than or equal to two, every graph she has a beta EDCS. Okay? And there's actually a constructive proof for this. You iteratively take an edge that violates one of the EDCS properties and fix it, right? So if it, for example, is if there is an edge inside your EDCS whose edge degree is too large, you remove it from your EDCS. Or if it is outside your EDCS and its edge degree is a small, you add it to your EDCS. And the proof is actually a little challenging because if you fix one edge, it may lead to new violations. But one can show that this process eventually terminates and you will end up with an EDCS. 
And precisely because of the same uh, uh, difficulty with the construction, uh, this construction is actually not directly implementable in the streaming setting because we may have to fix an edge multiple times and it's not possible to do this in the streaming setting because the edges arrive only one by one and you need to decide uh, at the time that an edge arrives whether you want to keep it in your memory or not. So all the works based on EDCS in the streaming model uh, are based on a different construction. This is just a constructive proof that an EDCS exists. All right. So now let me tell you about the main property of an EDCS. This was first proved by Bernstein and Stein in 2015. And there's also a simpler proof for this um, in the work of Asadi and Bernstein from 2019. So it says that uh, if, you're, you ha if you have a beta EDCS H of G, and this beta is larger than some constant, particularly one over epsilon squared times some absolute constant, then the maximum uh, matching of H, the size of the maximum matching of H, let me actually point out here and throughout the talk, I'll use mu function mu to denote the maximum matching size. So, so long as this beta is larger than one over epsilon squared, the maximum matching size of H is at least two thirds minus epsilon of the maximum matching of G. Okay, so in other words, an EDCS is going to include a two thirds approximate matching of G, so long as this beta is large enough. And this is actually tight and in a very strong sense. Even if you allow beta to be as large as n over three, we call it, we want beta to be constant so that this EDCS includes only O of n edges. But even if you allow the EDCS to have uh, n squared edges, omega n squared edges, and allow beta to be as large as n over three, there are examples where an EDCS does not include a larger than two thirds approximation. And here's, here's an example. So this is a graph which has a perfect matching marked with red. Now, these blue edges form an EDCS for this graph. Particularly, all the edges of this middle part of the, the perfect matching are missing in our EDCS. And uh, just to verify that this is an EDCS, know that every vertex here in the EDCS has a degree close to beta over two. And so every one of these missing edges that you take, some of, its, uh, some of the degrees of its endpoints end in, inside the EDCS is beta, so it satisfies the second constraint. So this is an EDCS and uh, it does not include a better than two thirds. You can easily verify by just looking at this graph that this, these blue edges uh, cannot construct a matching of size larger than two thirds, uh, the size of the perfect match. Okay. So this was the background I wanted to give you on, on EDCS. And uh, our first result is to give a characterization of the tight instances for EDCS. We showed that uh, Every tight instance for EDCS is in fact very similar to this example that I just talked about. This is not just one example where EDCS fails to go beyond two thirds approximation, but that in fact, every tight instance for EDCS is very similar to this in the following sense. We prove that either the EDCS is going to include a strictly better than two thirds approximation, or there is a missing matching M of size at least a third of the maximum matching of G such that for every edge of this missing matching that you take, the degrees of its endpoints inside H is very close to beta over two. So this is a structural result that we proved for EDCS. And uh, it is a main building block of our algorithm. So let me tell you a little bit about the proof as well. Good. So as before, we assume that H is a beta EDCS of our graph G. And suppose for now that the graph is bipartite, the final guarantee of our algorithm holds also for general graphs, just to convey the intuition, but I'll assume here that the graph G is bipartite. Okay, so we have this EDCS H, and let us take a Hall's witness set A for H, and recall that Hall's witness set A is the set A in one partition of the graph that maximizes the difference in size of A and the neighbor set of A inside the graph. Okay, so, so this is this is the Hall's witness and this set B is the neighbor set of A, right? So we uh, use B to denote the neighbor set of A inside H. And uh, we also use A bar and B bar to denote the complements of these sets inside their partitions. Okay, now if you plug in Hall's theorem, you immediately get that the maximum matching of uh, your EDCS is equal to size of A bar plus the size of B. Or in other words, you have a matching of this form, matching all the vertices of A bar, all the vertices of B, 
to B bar and A respectively. Okay. This essentially means that to argue that the EDCS includes a large matching, it suffices to show that size of A bar plus size of B is large. And to do this, we take, a max, we take the edges of a maximum matching of G that go from A to B bar. And know that these are all missing from the EDCS because all the neighbors of A in H go to B. Right? So all the edges of M are missing in H. And uh, by Hall's theorem again, it can be easily seen that the size of this missing matching M should be equal to the size of uh, maximum matching of G minus maximum matching of H. Intuitively, uh, if this is the Hall's witness for H, if, uh, if H has a small uh, matching because of this witness set, then the, if the maximum matching of H is much larger, it should match many of the vertices of A to outside B. Okay. And so size of this M is at least, is, is equal to uh, size of the maximum matching of G minus maximum matching of H. And if you don't have a better than two thirds approximation, this is at least a third of the maximum matching of G. So if, if mu uh, H is the smaller than two thirds mu G, uh, then M is at least a third of mu G. All right. So we have a relatively large matching going from A to B bar in our original graph. And uh, note that because all these edges are missing in our EDCS, the second property of EDCS says that for every one of these edges, the edge degree must be at least beta minus one. Okay. Okay, but what was our claim? Our claim was that every one of these edges that you take, in fact, the degrees must be very close to beta over two. So this, this uh, property of EDCS does not tell us about how these degrees are distributed between the endpoints of these edges. They could be unbalanced, but our structural result says that if your EDCS is not better than two thirds approximate, then these degrees should be very balanced. And let us see why. So consider the first case, if, if all the degrees are very balanced. So what happens is if you take any one of these edges, note that all these blue edges are inside EDCS. So if you take any one of these edges, because on one side you have degree beta over two, the first property of EDCS says that the other endpoint cannot have degree much higher than beta over two, okay? So this will look something like a very, very much like a regular graph. And so size of B and size of A bar, both equal size of M, right? So in other words, in other words we knew that we discussed that uh, size of maximum matching of H equals uh, size of A bar plus size of B. And this is two times the missing part of the matching. And so you get a two thirds approximation. Now let's see what happens if the degrees are unbalanced. Now, just to give you the intuition, suppose that uh, suppose this very extreme case that all the vertices on the top have degree two beta over three and all the vertices on the bottom have beta over three. Recall again that all these edges must have edge degree at least beta. So some of these degrees should be beta. Now suppose that they are unbalanced in the following way that all the vertices on the top have two beta over three degree and all the vertices on the bottom have beta over three degree. And now what happens if, is if you take any one of these edges of uh, S on top, the other endpoint now has degree at most beta over three because the other endpoint has beta, degree two beta over three. And what this says is that uh, the size of B itself should be twice the size of the matching end. So before we had that size of A bar plus size of B is twice size of M. But here, size of B alone is twice the size of uh, the missing matching M. And if you put it together with A bar, you get a much larger uh, guarantee. And so you beat two thirds of oxygen. So, so to parse the, the structure result again, we showed that, yeah. So, but this doesn't exclude um, a situation where half of S has degree, um, beta beta over three and another half has, has degree two beta over three and, and it actually beta. does yeah so so in this in the in the paper we proved that even if a tiny fraction of the vertices have unbalanced a, a tiny fraction of the edges of m a small constant fraction of the edges of m have uh, unbalanced degrees then the size of a bar plus size of b uh, is going to be strictly larger than si two times the size of M and we get a strictly better than two thirds approximation. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so this, this might have been a little technical, but I just wanted to give you a high level overview of the proof of this structural result. 
because I, I think this is this is one of the main uh, conceptual contributions of the paper, which might also find uh, applications later because in this EDCS approach has been applicable to a lot of different settings. All right. Now let's get back to our guarantee of a step one. What did we want to prove? We wanted to prove that either the algorithm of Bernstein obtains a strictly better than two thirds approximation, or that it obtains a close to two thirds approximation very early on after merely observing little or one fraction of the edges. And I actually don't need to go through the details of the algorithm of Bernstein of the construction of uh, the EDCS that uh, Bernstein gives, but I'll only mention this about his algorithm. The algorithm of Bernstein actually a little implicitly, this is uh, not explicitly in the, in the algorithm, but if you look at the proof, you will realize that the EDCS that Bernstein constructs is composed of two types of edges. There are edges, uh, this, this EDCS H has two types of edges, H early and H late, where every edge of H early comes from the first little over one fraction of the stream. But so all the edges of the, uh, the H early part of the EDCS come very early on, Whereas the edges of H late can come uh, later in the stream. However, H late has a very small maximum degree. The maximum degree of H late is only one. Or in other words, H late is just one matching. Okay. Good. So knowing this about the algorithm of Bernstein, we are ready to, to prove our, our guarantee. We show that either the EDCS that uh, Bernstein constructs this includes a strictly better than two thirds approximation or the maximum matching of the H early part itself is at least a two thirds approximation. Good. And how do we prove this? Consider the tight instance we just talked about, right? This is, this is the matching, this is the missing matching of th size a third of uh, the maximum matching of G. Now, if the EDCS is not uh, strictly better than two thirds, we just proved this a structural result that all the degrees of the endpoints of M should be very close to beta over two, right? And, uh, and as a result, we have a near regular graph connected to the top part of these various, this matching and another disjoint regular graph connected to the bottom part of this matching. And now note that even if we throw away all the edges of H late, we are again, uh, going to have a regular graph because H late is just a matching. Right? So remove this matching from these blue edges. Now you only have the edges of H early and it's still a regular graph. And because you have a regular graph, what you can do is you can construct a near perfect matching in each one of these regular graphs. And so we are now using only the edges of H early and construct a matching of size twice the size of the missing part of the matching which itself is one third of uh, mu g. And so you construct a matching of size two thirds of mu g in this case. Now, let us see what happens if uh, the degrees are unbalanced. Know that if the degrees are unbalanced, we are no longer able to match all the vertices of S bottom to A bar, for example. But we already showed that in this case, mu h is going to have a strictly larger than two thirds approximation. Right? So, so this, this completes the proof either the EDCS of Bernstein already includes a strictly better than two thirds approximation or the early part of the stream that the, the subset of edges is stored in the early part of the stream itself includes a two thirds approximation. This was all I wanted to tell you about the, the step uh, one of the algorithm. And then the second step of the algorithm is uh, to go beyond two thirds approximation. So here we assume that we are we have a close to two thirds approximation early on and we want to spend the rest of the stream augmenting this uh, matching. Good, uh, just a quick reminder an augmenting path is a path in the graph that uh, alternates between the edges of uh, the matching and non-matching edges. And it starts and ends with edges that do not belong to the matching. And augmenting paths are useful because if you flip the, their status in the matching, you increase the matching size by one. Okay, so the goal is to discover many of these augmenting paths, apply them and go beyond with those approximation. Good. And the first observation is that if you have a two thirds approximation here, here's a graph it's, uh, and the red edges form a two thirds approximate matching because if you uh, just uh, look at the uh, red, uh, look at the uh, black edges, they form a matching of size 1.5 uh, times the size of the red matching. 
Now, if you look at this graph, every path that exists in this graph is actually an augmenting path of length five. So this graph does not include any augmenting path of a smaller size. And uh, the challenge with length five augmenting paths is actually discovering the middle edge of the path. And to tell you why this is a challenge, let me quickly compare uh, length three augmenting paths with length five augmenting paths. And uh, this, is, this is actually uh, an interesting observation about the uh, algorithm of Conrad, Magnus, and, and Matthew from 2012. So the length three augmenting paths that they find in, in the, the second phase of their algorithm where they find these length three augmenting paths works even if the edges of the augmentation phase arrive in an adversarial order. So for the first part of their algorithm, they do require a random arrival of the edges, but the second augmentation phase works even if the edges arrive in a random, if, if in an adversarial order. And uh, as a remark, this actually means that if you manage to find a close to half approximation early on uh, in the adversarial order streams, you, you will beat half approximation answering this longest standing of a problem. Uh, yeah, so, so the challenge is discovering this half approximation early on, which they showed is possible to do on, in random order streams. But in sharp contrast, if you look at the hard instance of Goel, Caprella, and Kana for the one-way communication complexity of matching, it actually gives away a two-thirds approximation very early on for free, yet it is provably impossible to find any augmenting path if the rest of the edges arrive in an adversarial order. Okay, so what this says is that uh, our augmentation phase should provably use the random arrival of the edges as well. Good. And uh, we use this random uh, arrival of the edges of the augmentation phase in the following way. Right? We discover only length five augmenting paths whose middle edge arrives after the endpoint edges. Okay. So going back, so if, if you have a length five augmenting path, uh, we already have a two thirds approximation. So, so we do have these, uh, these two red uh, edges. What we have to discover is these three other blue edges. And what I'm saying is that uh, I discovered augmenting paths of the following form that this middle edge comes after these two endpoints. And because the edges arrive in a random order, we expect to see a lot of augmenting paths of this form. Good. And uh, I won't have time to go through the details of the augmentation phase, but uh, we partition the, the rest of the stream into two parts, roughly up to the middle part of the stream we try to discover the endpoints of these uh, length five augmenting paths. And we do so by constructing a B matching here, the, uh, the green edges form a B matching. Uh, this, this is actually a lopsided B matching. The degrees on one side uh, are different from the degrees on the other side. And uh, after that, uh, for, the, for the rest of the stream, every edge that arrives, we look whether it forms a length up to five augmenting path, uh, using the edges that we have stored up to now into our memory. And then the analysis shows that because there are a lot of uh, augmenting paths whose middle edge arrives after the endpoint edges, this way we will construct, uh, we will find a lot of uh, length, uh, vertex disjoint length five, up to, length up to five augmenting paths, applying which allows us to go beyond two thirds approximation. Okay, so to conclude, we showed that there is a strictly better than two thirds approximate algorithm the random order streaming setting from the maximum matching problem that uses only n log n space and the algorithm succeeds with a high probability. And the important implication is that unlike many related models, two thirds approximation is not the right answer for random order streams. And a few open problems that remain is, are as follows. So the first immediate open problem is, can we get a significantly better than two thirds approximation or not? So our improvement over two thirds is, is, uh, is a very small constant. Another question as raised uh, by one of the audience is whether a one minus epsilon approximation is also possible or not. So this is, this is a very interesting open problem. Of course, if, if you get a one minus epsilon approximation, it would be amazing. But even if you rule out say a 0.99 uh, approximation, that would also be very interesting. And uh, another open problem is whether we can uh, beat this half approximation on their adversarial arrivals. And, uh, let me also here uh, mention uh, more concretely the progress that we make in the same paper on the second problem. So we particularly proved that uh, there is no algorithm with this much space 
that can obtain a one minus epsilon approximation. Right? So here note that the, the dependence on epsilon is nearly exponential. Right? So there is no uh, near linear in n times near exponential in one over epsilon time uh, a space algorithm that obtains the one minus epsilon approximation. Or in other words, an exponential dependence on one over epsilon is necessary for any algorithm obtaining a one minus epsilon approximation. Right, and with that, I'm uh, going to finish the talk. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I would be happy to answer any questions.